This is Turk Road, a rutted path cutting through the hills of Montana. It's not much to look at, but over the last few years, use of the dirt road has triggered violent threats, armed confrontation, and some believe cold-blooded murder. With less than seven people per square mile, Montana remains one of the last great frontiers. Montana is a unique state in, in that fact, just people want to move here, they want to live on their property, and everybody leave them alone. That's exactly what attracted Mike Kreitz, an avid outdoorsman who owned 80 acres off Turk Road just outside Helena. This particular lifestyle suited Mike because, um, number one, he loved nature, and number two, Mike was a little frustrated, as we all get, with authority and rules and, and things like that. And he just, you know, he wanted to live off the grid. Mike built a home with no running water and no electricity, living alone, save for his beloved wolf dogs canines that were 87% wolf. He was just so proud of this land. And he even liked living here in the winter, which I found crazy. Well, it's right about 10 below, and it's most definitely kind of a continuing blizzard out there. But I'm going hunting. Guess maybe I am insane. I'm not sure. Despite being a loner, Mike became good friends with his neighbors, Gloria and Mark Flora. Mike had a reputation of being a very tough guy, but I I have seen him, he would live trap chipmunks rather than get a cat. When one of his dogs would die, he'd just, he'd be broken up for days. He was a softy at heart. Well, hello there, little buck. It's not against the law to be odd or eccentric, and that's what he was. And he, he liked to live out by himself. And if you didn't want any trouble with Mike, all you had to do was leave him alone. That's all you had to do. He wasn't out looking for trouble with anyone. But trouble found Mike when John Meehan and his wife moved on to Turk Road. Turk Road is neither public nor private. Instead, landowners secure easements, a form of legal permission that allows them to use the road when it passes through another's property. That's where all the trouble starts. You see, Mike Kreitz lives near the end of Turk Road. To get to his house, he had to cut across John Meehan's property. And according to Sheriff Leo Dutton, Meehan didn't want anyone on his land. Meehan and his wife maintain that no one has a right to cross that. They own it, and they aren't opening it up to anyone. That doesn't make any sense. That road had been in place for 40 odd years. It was certainly used for, by other people before they ever moved there. I mean, it's a giant road. Michael Kreitz maintained when he bought his land that he did have an easement to cross all roads into his property. And that was the, the genesis of the argument. Then, Neither one wanted to back down. How else were Michael Kreitz and the Flores supposed to get to their property then? Well, that was, that was the issue. They, they had no other way to get there. It sounds bizarre because it is bizarre. It sounds crazy because it is crazy. It makes no sense. It's certainly not enough of a reason to go to war with people over, and they did. They harassed Mike, and they blocked the road. They blocked the road with snow. They blocked the road so that other people couldn't get through. When Mike would make it out to town, Mian would have to see him go by because Mike had to go by Mian's place. And as soon as Mike left, Mian would get on his snowmobile and race up to Mike's property, terrorize his dogs, do loops around his house with the snowmobile, and then race down before Mike could get back. Mike began recording video evidence of his tense showdowns with Meehan. Well, old Johnny here's blocked the road. You gotta prove it. You wanna pull the documentation up and prove you've got access through here. And Mike claims this standoff nearly got him killed. Well, I'm hoping you guys just heard that shot. I just heard a bullet fly over my head, so we'll see if that's enough to uh, make you law enforcement types do something. Hope you will. It's not getting any better up here. My brother expressed his fear for his life numerous times to law enforcement. They called a lot. You crossed my land, you plowed me in, uh, you tried to run me off the road. Those are the kind of things that were beginning to escalate. Gloria and Mark were also feeling the heat. Did John Meehan ever threaten you? 
On four different occasions, he fired a gun at close range from a hiding position. I did feel very threatened. This was not target practice. This was not random. This was specifically intended to intimidate, and it did. And I told him, I cannot have your dogs chasing my livestock. He said, You're, you should put your livestock in a barn. My dog need, need to run. And we got no help from the sheriff's department, zero. Tensions on Turk Road were reaching a boiling point, but nothing could prepare anyone for what happened next. Montana may boast wide open spaces, but there's a dangerous turf war brewing in big sky country that's about to turn deadly. Well, I'm hoping you guys just heard that shot. I just heard a bullet fly over my head. Those shots are being fired just outside of the town of Helena on Turk Road, where John Meehan is refusing to allow neighbors to cross his property to get to their homes. You gotta prove it. But mountain man Mike Kreitz refuses to back down, and that's proving very dangerous. All right, calling you deputies one last time, and that's it. He pointed a gun at me. He pointed it at me twice. So my brother had videotaped an actual altercation where this neighbor down the road was pointing a gun at my brother. He's lurking around up there. I don't know if he's trying to get a clear shot at me. I'm gonna try to call the sheriff's department one more time. He was hiding behind his vehicle and he had called the sheriff's office and you could just hear the terror in his voice. He said, get the F off my land and he pointed a gun at me twice. I'm trying to dig out of the snow here and break. Yeah, I did think he was gonna shoot me. I had to, I, I ran, I look at a, a rifle of some kind. He's pointing, or he was pointing a rifle at me. I'm by my truck right now, but I'm, I'm gonna stand watch here, and, and if he points a gun at me, I'm gonna shoot him. Meehan was charged with a misdemeanor and ordered to remain 1,500 feet away from Mike. But he wasn't Meehan's only enemy. Neighbors Mark and Gloria Flora were also in John Meehan's crosshairs. When you have to access your property, I mean, on your own driveway, you have to have a loaded gun in your lap, a camera or some kind of recording device, and your cell phone pre-dialed to 911 just to drive in and out of your driveway. That's not normal. That's not OK. How did you try to stop the harassment? Well, we went to the police, to the sheriff's department. That didn't work. Went to the county attorney. That didn't work. But the turf war with Meehan wasn't the only one on Turk Road. Leon Ford, an ex-military retiree, owned undeveloped land just north of Mike's house and wanted to drive across Mike's property as a shortcut to his own. When Mike refused, a second feud erupted on the mountain, and Mark Flora claims it got heated. Did Mike ever talk about his problems with Leon Ford? Leon Ford had pulled a gun on Mike and threatened his life. Ford was working on this gate that Mike had closed. Ford was trying to, I don't remember, cut it open or pry it open or do something. And Mike went down and Ford just pulled a gun on him. Just pulled a gun on him. Mike ducked behind a bush and Ford yelled at him, yeah, you better run. Did the sheriff's office think at any point that the situation on Turk Road had the potential to become violent? Yes, we did. We responded several times where guns were present and the possibility of someone shooting someone existed. By the summer of 2011, Mike was feeling trapped and shared his fears with close friend Chris Forsett. He flat just looked at me and he said, Chris, they're going to kill me. And um, I just kind of blew it off. You know, I was like, yo, come on, they're not going to kill you off a road. And that was the last time I seen Mike. We know that John Meehan told at least three people that an ex-military man was coming up in two weeks and he was going to take care of Mike once and for all. That Leon Ford was going to show up and finish Mike off. Two weeks later, an ex-military man shows up and Mike disappears. June 26th, Mike calls Mark and Gloria and tells them Ford asked for a meeting to discuss their ongoing battle. He called me about 10 minutes to 9. in the morning and asked me to come over and help him because he was afraid Leon Ford was going to kill him and I didn't go. He called and asked me to come over and witness the conversation. We told Mike to you know, videotape it, don't expose yourself, record the conversation. 
And he said he would. And that was the last time I talked to him. Later the next day, the forest spotted a wolf in the yard snatching their dog, Rocky, in its teeth. I thought, sure, the dog was dead. I, d I just didn't want him to eat it. I picked up a stick and I went running at these wolves and he spit the dog out. And at that moment, I saw that in fact, it was Mike's wolf, Mike's, and I knew it because it had a chain. And uh, Rocky came running to me and I had the stick in my hand and I ran the two wolves off and then I went back to the house. And, Instantly, I had a terrible feeling. I had known Mike for 11 years and his dogs had never been out. Mike's dogs would have never been running loose. That's when I knew it was something serious. A search of Mike's house turned up no signs of violence, but no signs of Mike either. His truck was out front, the tailgate was down. He'd been working on a planting project. His front door was open. His wallet was in his glove compartment, so no, we knew. We knew something had happened to him. Mike Kreitz, a modern-day mountain man locked in a dangerous land dispute, has disappeared without a trace. According to Mike's mother, her son had a dark premonition of his fate. His last word to me were, Mom, if they find me dead up here, please tell the authorities about the crazy guy down the street. Goodbye, Mom. I love you. The man Mike called the crazy guy down the street is Leon Ford. Kreitz and Ford were in a bitter turf war. Neighbor Mark Flora claims the two had a meeting set, and Mark says he told Mike to videotape it to protect himself. He videotaped a lot. He videotaped all the time, which is interesting because there is a video machine that's missing and we can't find it. But in their search for clues, police do find something. The floor security cameras captured images of Leon Ford's truck driving toward and away from Mike's home on the day he went missing. We knew that Mike had not just gone off hiking. We knew he was dead. We knew he was murdered. But according to Connie Kreitz, Leon Ford and John Meehan had a different theory. They claim Mike ran off because of a lawsuit they filed against him three months earlier. I did not find one shred of documentation about a lawsuit alleging Mike harassed these people. So you don't think Mike Kreitz was ever served with a lawsuit? No, Mike was not served with a lawsuit. Because Mike he... would Mike would have told us immediately. He would have been on the phone in a New York minute. Crime Watch Daily has found there was indeed a lawsuit filed, but friends and neighbors say that Mike was never served. And that theory of Mike on the run came to a tragic end four months later, when a Forest Service employee found a bag of dismembered bones. Either coyotes or some animals had dug up the remains because possibly of the smell and pulled the bag partially out of the dirt. Even though we had to wait for DNA, we knew it was him. And I will never forget when my mother asked me, she said, Connie, do you know if they can tell whether Mike was shot in the head? And I, I didn't want to tell her but I figured she would hear it somewhere, and so I had to look at my mother and say, Mom, there was not a head. While everyone waited for DNA results, John Meehan ran afoul of the law once again. What was John Meehan arrested for during the investigation? John Meehan was arrested for tampering with evidence. We had put up trail cameras in order to gather some information of who was moving in an area toward the Michael Kreitz's land. And on that trail camera, it was clear that John Meehan walked up to it and then it went blank. So he was arrested and charged with tampering with evidence. Then something peculiar happened. In the affidavit against Meehan, authorities revealed a potentially damning detail. It was disclosed that he had information about Mike's remains that was only available to law enforcement at the time. That is correct. John Meehan did say something to a citizen that we had not let out yet. So it, it raises an index of suspicion of what he knows about this case. But can you talk further about that? No. According to the affidavit acquired by Crime Watch Daily, Meehan informed a citizen that the bones could not be identified because they were missing a specific body part, a fact police had not released to the general public. John Meehan did have some prior knowledge 
of some information that during our investigation came out that we feel only he or our suspect or person of interest would know in this case. The affidavit also revealed that Leon Ford and his wife lied to police on multiple occasions regarding their actions on the day Mike went missing. That after he was told about Mike's conversation with me, Ford changed his story three times. Then came the confirmation everyone feared. The dismembered body was indeed that of Mike Kreitz. What do you think happened to him? I know what happened to him. They killed him and they cut him up and they treated him like dog meat. A short time after finding his dismembered body, Mike's head was unearthed several miles away. Similar circumstances as the first, very close to the road and buried very shallow. The remains that were found were on two different sides of the Continental Divide, put in bags and buried. That was unusual. Who do you think killed Mike Kreitz? I fully believe that uh, Leon Ford and John Meehan were the ones that killed Mike Kreitz. I can't think of anybody else that hated my brother like that. There's just no way. Questions also surround the mysterious lawsuit against Mike. With his disappearance, his property is there for the taking. So isn't that convenient? Let's file a lawsuit. Let's not serve him. Let's wait four weeks, no reply, put him into default, which they did, and voila, you can ask the court for anything. This lawsuit is still continuing, even though Mike was murdered and cut up. I personally think that it was over a boundary dispute, and one of the people that are a person of, our, of interest are the ones that did this, but until harder evidence comes in, we have no way to prove it. While they loved the wooded area of Montana and the dream home they had built by hand, after Mike was killed, Gloria and Mark Flora faced the frightening realization that the argument over the road could lead to their own demise, and the couple literally fled to another state. And we were told to leave by no less than six deputies. They said, if you want to live, you're going to have to leave. And we were really attached to that place. I miss Montana every day. I cut every timber in that house myself. I put it all up myself. I'm too old to do that again now. Mike's murder may be unsolved, but we still wanted answers. Just arrive and ring back code while your party is reached. I tried John Meehan up on Turk Road, but he refused to speak with us unless we paid him. So I decided to confront Leon Ford. We tracked Leon Ford from Helena, Montana to here, Oak Harbor, Washington. I'm wearing a Kevlar vest because Leon Ford is known to carry a firearm. Remember, he was the last person to see Mike Kreitz alive. And in fact, Mike Kreitz had reported that Leon Ford was brandishing a gun in front of his face. So we don't know what type of situation we're walking into. Thus, the Kevlar vest. Traveling with the camera crew and security, we got a call that Ford was spotted in town. So we got a tip that there's a vehicle here that fits the description of Leon Ford's pickup truck. Montana plates, we're checking it out right now. And bingo, that's it, Montana plates right there. And it's Leon Ford's vehicle for sure. Whether he's in there or not, we don't know. We didn't find Ford in the shop. Then we got the text from our private investigator. He had him. So right now we're pulling up to Leon Ford's home. So we're gonna knock on the door, ring the bell, see if he comes outside and will talk to us about the murder and dismemberment of Mike Kreitz. Hello. Are you Leon Ford? Speaking. Hey, I'm Jason Matero with Crime Watch Daily. Okay. We just had a few questions for you. We're doing a story on the murder of Mike Kreitz. Um, unfortunately, since it's an ongoing case, our lawyer in uh, Montana, uh, Palmer Hooverstall, um, told us. Well, that, we, uh, we have this well, sheriff's to... affidavit right here that right. says your vehicle was seen speeding away. The day Mike disappeared, why were you in a rush to leave? We don't have any comments. We don't have any comments. No it's comments. an ongoing case, and we hope that the case gets solved. Mr. Ford, did you murder Mike Reitz? We have we no comments. You can't comment on if you murdered Mike Reitz? Seriously? Your vehicle was seen speeding away the day Mike went missing. Yes or no, did you murder Mike Reitz? You see this? They're, they're definitely here. No comment on whether they murdered 
Mike Kreitz. And look, they, they're peeking through the window sill. Right there. You see? You can see Leon Ford. Hey, Mr. Ford, why were you being untruthful to the sheriff's office? It's their quote, not mine. If you murdered Mike Kreitz, Crime Watch Daily is on the case. This isn't going away. It's not going away. For now, the pressure remains squarely on law enforcement to find Mike's killer. Do you think the murder of Mike Kreitz can be solved? It's just a matter of time, but the person who did it, rest assured, we're going to get you. It can be solved, and we're going to find you. His family misses him, his, his friends miss him, and he has a lot of people that love him and a lot of people praying for the people to be caught. And they will, they will be caught.